fact, American people don't choose the president. Well, they kind of do. I mean, but just not directly. Um, there's this little thing called the Electoral College that actually chooses the president of the United States. Um, you're going to go ahead and grab card 1.22A, and we're going to do card 1.22B. Both are about the Electoral College. The first one is just the history that it was a compromise. It actually was a compromise about how to, um, you know, how to select the president. I mean, it was very controversial how to select the president. So we'll go through that. And then the second part will be like, how does it work? Like, well, how do we select the president? So at the Constitutional Convention, there is this whole issue of the executive branch and how to choose them. And uh, so let's go through that and uh, let's find out what happens. Okay, here we go. Backside. All right, one. So there's a debate over how to select the president. All right, that's the first part. So go ahead and write that down. Backside of your card. All right, debate. How to select president. Let me go through a couple um, ideas that were being hashed about on how to select the president. Okay, number one, uh, Congress selects the president. Congress selects the president. The negative of that is that then the president is a creature of Congress, basically controlled by Congress. This would be the, the uh, equivalent of prime minister in Britain. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before that uh, president, uh, the executive branch in most countries is the prime minister, and that person is chosen by the members of the parliament. That would be the same thing here. And so the, the founders didn't love this idea because then Congress is, you know, as they said, it was a the president would be a creature of Congress. So that's not good. Second idea was popular vote. All right. That's the most simple, right? Everybody elects the president popularly um, across the country, add up the votes, whoever has the most wins. All right. A couple problems with that. Um, one, there is a lot of fear about people's ability to follow a crowd, to follow the mob, and um, to maybe destroy you know, the country by following a, somebody who can lead them astray. Um, history has, is replete, replete with, uh, replete with uh, examples of people who got elected into office and were actually very dangerous. I mean, Adolf Hitler kind of comes to mind. Um, but we call them demagogues. That's what we call someone who like gets the people riled up and they go follow them and they do crazy stuff. And we do know that people in a group, people in a crowd, um, can become a mob and they all do things that they never would do individually. So there is that that fear that the founders had. Uh, of course, Greece was a popular vote and they kind of destroyed themselves. And so there is this fear of that. So they were like, mm, I don't know how much we love that. It probably makes sense, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, the other problem with the popular vote is that the small states just are irrelevant. Like okay, small states are like, I don't love this because who's going to care like what about Connecticut's needs if you're running for president or someone's being chosen for president because like the Connecticut has a small population. So who gives a flip? So small states are destroyed. Um, and, and then the second thing there is the fear of people falling for a demagogue, someone who's going to rile them up and do something crazy. We see on social media how we all are, um, you know, peer pressure on social media is incredibly um, strong. And that's the same sort of idea here is that the people will follow a group um, and so maybe popular vote isn't the greatest thing, okay? So th those are the two big things about the popular vote. Um, and then the, another idea was that states would select the president, that the states would select. There were a couple different ideas. One of them was that the governors would get together and they would vote for one of them to be president or that state legislatures would actually vote for somebody. And uh, th so that, that was another idea. None of these ideas anybody loved. All right. Uh, that th was debated. And so it ended up being a compromise, another compromise. I know compromise is a really weird word nowadays because in America, we don't do things like compromise. However, our government was created by compromise and the actual foundation of the Constitution forces compromise. If you don't compromise, you get nothing done. I mean, that's what happens. Um, it's, it's like our, our uh, po political parties haven't learned that yet. Um, and so the compromise was this. The states would select, however they wanted to do it, temporary electors who would then vote separately for president. The compromise was this. Again, I'll read it again as you're right. States would select temporary, so like a one-time thing. You know, you show up and you vote and then you're done. Who would vote separately for president. So the electors would meet in each state. They would not get together as a group. 
that was dangerous. You know, if we all get together in a group. Now we got that problem with one person might lead the whole group astray and elect someone crazy. So the idea is, is that like the Rhode Island electors would get together, they'd vote. And then the New York people would get together and they'd vote. And then the Pennsylvania people would get together, select, uh, um, and they would vote. And so it's a temporary one-time thing. And they, and they vote to s- select the president. Um, most states, the people voted for the electors. And so you would vote for, you know, if you wanted George Washington or John Adams, let's say, then you would vote for electors who would select John Adams. That was the idea of how this would work. You didn't vote directly for president. You were voting indirectly for president. All right. So that's how this compromise came about. It was a debate over how to select president. All right. The second part, 122B, electoral college. How does it work? You need to know this well. There's a millionaire that goes over this, and you need to be at a kick butt on that electoral college millionaire. All right, how does it work? All right, flip over backside, pause it if you need to at any time. Thank you. All right, um, one, there's 538 electoral votes total now. That That is 435 House of Representatives, okay, 435 members of the House, 100 senators, and three electoral votes for the District of Columbia um, that came in a constitutional amendment um, in the 50s. So 538 electoral votes total now. It used to be a lot less than that um, because there were less states, there were less senators, there were less representatives. The House was smaller um, in history. Um, Each state plus D.C., each state plus the District of Columbia gets two votes for each senator. Now, D.C., by the way, doesn't have a senator. They don't have senators. Um, D.C. is the District of Columbia. It's the government seat. They don't get senators, but they get two votes as if they did. That's why they have three. All right, so each state gets two votes for each senator. States get votes for every U.S. representative. So if your state has five representatives based on population, then and then you add two senators, you'll have seven electoral votes, like Oklahoma, if you look at the map. In fact, look at the map real quick. This is the electoral map between Trump and Clinton, the states in red, okay, also called red states. Um, were voted for Trump and the ones in blue voted for Hillary. Um, This is a good time to just take note. You got to be able to read data. And and one of the things you look for is trends in data. So you might want to take a moment here and just look at this and look at trends. What are some trends in the data do you notice? A couple things I might notice is that blue states tend to be on the coast, um, the West Coast and the East Coast. Not a lot. Pretty red in the middle, pretty red in the south. All right, pretty red in the middle, pretty red in the south. Um, so that's just a couple trends there. All right, um, so the, the Republican states that voted for Trump um, totaled 306 electoral votes. Clinton um, states got 232 electoral votes. That's a um, majority. A majority is 240 because 240 um, is more than half of more than half of the electoral vote of 538. If uh, they tie, it'd be 269, 269, and then if it is a tie, that goes to the House of Representatives. Yeah. All right, um, so that's how states get votes. Notice Virginia has 13. That's because we have two senators and 11 representatives. Look at California. It has 55 electoral votes because it has 53 representatives and two senators. All right, um, matter of fact, let's go to that, number four. Um, I just wanted to point out the bigs and the littles. Um, the big, California. Okay, 55. And seven states plus D.C. have only three votes. So they have a very small population and they only get one House of Representative. Their House of Representative is elected by the entire state. That's their district. <laughs> um, and then other states, of course, have a lot more than that. But uh, D.C. and the seven uh, seven other states get three votes. That's it, the smallest one. So the smallest you can have is three, the tiniest number. And so far, the largest is 55 in California. Although it looks like in the next census, California may actually lose a couple representatives. And so they may actually go down from 55. Texas might jump up to over 40 because it's growing really fast. All right, that's number four. Number five, um, all are winner take all, which means that if you win the state, you win all the electoral votes. So if you win California, even by like two votes, one vote, then you get 55 electoral votes, all right? So that's how it works, winner take all. Winner just means you win all the electoral votes in that state. There are two states, Maine and Nebraska, Maine and Nebraska, that do it by congressional districts. So if you look at the Maine um, chart here on the left, 
Maine has two congressional districts. The first district there is in blue because Hillary won it. And the second district, which is much more rural, was won by Trump. So they get uh, the Trump gets that one district, but um, he gets that one electoral vote of the second district, and Hillary gets the one vote of the first district in Maine. But then the question is, who won the state? That's how you decide who gets the two Senate seats, electoral votes. So you look at the Maine president 2016, Clinton won by about 3%. So Clinton gets the three. Um, the two senator plus one is three. So in Maine, it was three electoral votes for Clinton, one for um, Trump. If you look at Nebraska in 2008, there's a little blue spot way on the right-hand side in the middle. That is Omaha, Nebraska, which is a big city. And that was won by Barack Obama. And so President Obama got one Nebraska seat. But you notice the whole rest of the state, every other county in the state was red, except for a couple of small areas. And um, so that, because of that, four went to uh, John McCain in 2008, and then the one went to uh, Barack Obama. So all the winner take all, except Maine and Nebraska. And you need to know those two exceptions, Maine and Nebraska, are by congressional district. All right. Um, also, who selects the electors? Well, the parties do. So Hillary Clinton has a slate of electors for Virginia, and Trump had a, l a slate of electors for Virginia. And whoever ends up winning the state, which in this case, in 2016, I should say, was um, Hillary Clinton. And so Hillary Clinton got to send her electors to the Electoral College and vote in um, about a month after the election. And then um, that's the last part, actually. Uh, electors vote about one month after the election. And remember, they only vote in their state. They do not get together in one mass group because that would be, you know, the founders thought that would be a possibility of people, um, you know, conniving and, and, and electing someone bad. So therefore, they all vote separately. It's like 50 separate elections. In fact, really, th that is how it is. It's 50 separate state elections, not a national election in, in reality. Okay. Um, that is the electoral college. You need to do a lot of practice on this because there's probably some things in here that you weren't aware of. And so there's a lot to do there. So turn the card over, um, maybe write it out on your whiteboard. Um, maybe have somebody in your family quiz you. You just turn it over and say it to yourself in your head. These are the ways that you study and get good at something. So make sure you do that. And then of course, do the practices. Thanks.